Hello and welcome to beautiful Montana and Hebgen Lake, one of my favorite fisheries of all here in the US uh, as a lake fishery. Uh, and welcome to another episode of Rio's How To. My name is Simon Gorsworth and today we're going to look at how to fish dry flies on a lake, in a boat, out there in the middle. As always with these how-to videos, we're going to take a look at the gear that we like to use, or I like to use, and I'm starting off on my rod here. I have a six-weight in-touch Rio Gold. The Rio Gold has got a 47-foot long head. That's quite a long head for fly lines these days, and the reason for that, you're going to be finding that you're targeting fish. Fish are moving. You need to pick up a lot of fly line to target a moving fish. That's why you need a long head. This is also the low stretch version, our in-touch line, and I like that low stretch again for picking up long lines and for positive hook sets. So that's the line that's on there. You're going to want long leaders. You want strong leaders. You don't need to go down to five and six X generally. This is a four X leader here. It's our PowerFlex Plus, which is a very strong material. It's 12 foot long. I've got that off my real gold. Then I've got a little tippet ring. And then hanging off the end of that, I've got some more four X PowerFlex Plus. So really that's the actual rig that I've got here. That's a, the leader and line set up. And on the end, just a selection of dry flies, you know, until you're out there looking around and see what's feeding. You don't know, but here's a selection of typical dry flies that I take out on the lake. I always like to fish a large dry fly as a sighter. Let's say a fish are feeding on coronoids, which is like a size 16 fly or maybe a big 14. Usually you can't see those at 50 feet away. You don't know where your fly is. But if you fish two dry flies, then you fish a large dry fly. That's your sighter. That gives you an idea of where the fly are, flies are in the water. And then when you get a rise that's behind the big dry fly, you can set the hook but do check your rules. Always got to make sure you're allowed to fish two flies before you fish two flies. So check your rules first and then you're set. So really that's it. Uh, of course, being a dry fly, you do want to apply some dry fly floating, but I'll do that when we're out there looking for fish. So that's it. As I said, that's what I rig. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to jump in the boat. We're going to get out into this beautiful bay and try and find some rising fish. All right, so we're out in the water. We've taken the boat out. We found some piece of water out here and we're dry fly fishing. And guess what you do when you're dry fly fishing? You look for rising fish. Pretty good giveaway where those fish are and what they're doing when you see fish up on the surface. Today, however, it's bright right now. There's not a lot of heads up. Hopefully they'll come up later on and we'll uh, target a few. But when you haven't got heads up and you want to fish dry fly, what do you want to do? You want to look for areas where you're more likely to get heads up than not. And this is a perfect example. What we'll do, we've posted up on what's called a slick. A slick is a wide bit, or it could be a narrow bit, but a bit of calm water, kind of glassy, oily water amongst all the ripple. Flies and bugs get caught up in this slick. Fish know that and fish tend to move up slicks. When you've got wide slicks, watch the edges of the slick where the slick meets the ripple. Fish go up the edges of the slick and the ripple and uh, also look for bubbles. Right now the post we're up here, where we're posted, is bubbles on the water, there's duns on the water, I can see some mayflies on the water, I can see some shucks, which are cases from flies that are already hatched out, mostly coronamids, and all this indicates that there's food here, which is what you'd get in a slick, and if fish are start, gonna start to rise, they're gonna start in the slick and start feeding. And a really important tip to know is when there's a wind, almost invariably fish swim upwind feeding into the wind lanes. So you wanna position yourself above where you think the fish are, and either drift down to the fish if you like to drift or anchor up and let the fish come on to you. What you don't want to do is start on the downstream side or the downwind side because then the fish are going to be moving away and you're just going to be chasing them forever and ever. That's a losing game. So here we are, as I said, we're posted up in a slick. Uh, we're going to go out and we're just going to float down this slick for a little bit. We might anchor up if we see some fish. We might just drift down this slick. And basically we're looking for rising fish. And if you see a fish rise, like dry fly fishing in a river, you want to cast upwind or upstream of the fish and you want to let your flies drift onto the fish or the fish come onto the flies. And I'm going to run through a couple of techniques when we're fishing here of what to do. Slack's a really important uh, asset to have when you're fishing dry flies in a lake. Believe it or not, it doesn't sound like it, but it does, and I'll show you why. And also, the last tip, really, in a lake, there's no real current here, so fish, when they take, they aren't hasty. They're leisurely, they come up, they'll usually head and tail, and things that happen to a lot of anglers, they just set the hook way too fast. So they're much slower lift sets rather than fast snatch sets. So really that's about what we're going to be looking for. That's what we're going to do. We're going to play around in this slick. We're going to look for rising fish and uh, I'll talk through a few things that I'm doing as we're fishing. See how you do that? Still a 12. That's a slack line cast. <laughs> Moving there. 11.30. Okay, so we've motored around the lake looking for slicks, looking for rising fish and there aren't any. And that's a real problem to do a dry fly fishing video when there's nothing rising. Still, 
knowledge is very important. So let's have a look at how you fish the dry fly in a lake and a couple of just simple tips about helping you increase your catch rate should fish be rising and you get the chance to catch one. So I've got dry flies on, as I said, and I've got the drogue out and we're drifting out, just kind of drifting downwind. And one of the most important things in a lake is to avoid drag. I know everyone knows about it in a river, but in a lake, people don't associate that. If you're fishing dry flies anchored, your boat is stationary, the current and wind is moving away, you cast a straight line and very soon your fly will sit still and the naturals all drift past. It's a downside. So I love fishing dry flies in lakes, drifting in a boat. You can throw out a drogue and slow your drift down if you want to. If there isn't much wind, you can just drift naturally. But drifting will give you a far better presentation of your dry flies in a lake than anchored up for that reason. If you do fish anchored, I'm going to show you a little tip here. If you do fish anchored, slack is good. What you really want is to make sure that you have some slack line. I'm just going to show you a little tip here. I've got a little bit of slack line in my left hand hanging down here. And as you're in an anchored boat and your line is starting to pull away from you, you want to just flick out a loop of slack like that. You just flick a couple of feet of slack on the water. And gradually what you'll see is your line will wash away and that'll soon get tight. Then you flick another couple of foot. So if you're fishing in the anchor boat, you do need to feed slack from dry flies. If you're fishing in a drift boat, you don't. Really, that's about the best tip I can give you. Again, you're looking for rising fish, you're looking for slicks, you're looking for likely spots like that for fish to rise. I like to fish straight down my boat because that way I'm drifting onto it so I can keep tension and I can keep an eye on my flies. Every now and then you're gonna find a fish rises to the side and you make a cast out here to the side. Well, just be careful of that because now you're creating a different angle, you might get more drag. So just be aware, drag is as significant in a lake as it is in a river. Well, that didn't work either. So one other thing you can do in a clear lake like this is head into some shallow water and look in the clearness of the lake in shallow water for cruising fish. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take up, wind the line in, go and find a little bay around here where there's no wind, where the water's calm and the sun shows us some fish and try and find some fish that are cruising around and get them that way. So we're in some really shallow, calm water here, watching, and we're gonna pull around, just looking for a rising or a cruising fish, not even a rising fish. And I'm gonna try and put the dry flies in front of that cruising fish. And with any luck, it's a feeder, so it's gonna come up and take it. That's another good technique with dries. You don't have to have rising fish. So either fish ripples and wind lanes where there might be fish, or kind of look around for cruisers that you can see and try and target them. And that's what we're gonna try and do in this bay here. He's gonna come onto that calabatus. He's coming straight to that calabatus. He's coming straight up to it. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh yeah, there you go. You called that one. <laughs> Nice. All right, fish on. Good eyes, Rob. Let's get this baby in. Well done. On nice the dry, fish. on the top. Nicely done. That was so superb to watch. <laughs> he followed that, he just came after it. He's coming, he's coming. That is dry fly fishing at its finest. What a beautiful rainbow. Classic dry fly grab on a lake. Fantastic, that is just awesome. Just love seeing fish on the surface, whether it's river or lake or wherever it is. Came up, took the calabatus, no hesitation, nice slow lift. Remember, never set these hooks on, on reservoir dry flies, but fast and high speed, just nice slow lift. All the confidence in the world in those grabs. Fantastic. Well, there you go. Dry fly on a lake. Hopefully you enjoyed that episode of How To, How to Fish a Dry Fly on a Lake. And if you did, stay tuned to the Rio website and check out our other ones, our other How To videos. Many thanks for watching. Catch you on the water.